what is up and welcome back to my channel for another part of the sims 3 to sims 4 series where we are recreating the sims 3 twinbrook families and their homes in the sims 4 so today we are recreating the caster family which is a very interesting family it was a lot of fun creating them in the sims 4 and decorating their house and you'll understand why in just a minute when i tell you um, their backstory and all of that information if you're not familiar with them but anyways we are creating um, Robert Castor, Beverly Castor, and Thomas and Jeffrey their two sons so their family description says when Bob first analyzed Bev's profile on the dating site he figured she was the one Simultaneously, the database beamed the database <laughs> database beamed his dithered smile past the spam filter right into her heart's inbox. He proposed on the third date, and the rest is history. But can they keep their secret to a perfect marriage quiet now that naughty little Jeffrey has begun tinkering with computers? What will the neighbors say? <laughs> so. The house that they live in is a very spacious three-bedroom home. It has a basement, a detached garage, and it's built to resemble a suburban-style house from 1950s sitcom. And that's kind of how they're styled as well. Um, it says Robert and Beverly first met through an internet dating site that the family does not own a computer. And the house, clothing, and behavior of the members of the family more closely resemble the stereotypical nuclear family than the family described in its biography. So, Robert serves as the family's only working sim and breadwinner and is described as strict and traditional. And Beverly follows her husband's traditional views and fulfills the role of a housewife, which may be a reference to stereotypical gender roles in the past. Thomas is portrayed as a troublemaking but the ultimately good child, so he is the, the youngest. And Jeffrey, the teenager, is shown as evil and at odds with his family and his enemies with his entire family. So, yeah, <laughs> it was really cool to be able to kind of design their outfits around that nuclear 1950s sitcom family. So, you know their hairstyles and everything that's why they look like that and keep that in mind when i'm building the house um but yeah it was really fun i love the series and i say this every single time i post a video but it's so much fun just kind of going outside of the box with all these sims and their personalities in their houses but anyways a little bit more about robert castor who is the father he works as an entry-level job as a latrine cleaner in the military career he is at level 4 in the handiness skill and has the Tinkerer lifetime wish in The Sims 3. I don't even remember what. I think I gave him Big Happy Family in The Sims 4. I can't really remember. We don't have the same traits and aspirations, obviously, so it's a little bit tricky when trying to, to decide what I want to go for to kind of recreate them. So I have to kind of tweak it a little bit, but... Anyways, he has a very high relationship with his wife, Beverly, whom he met online on a dating website. This led to them meeting each other in person and eventually having a happy marriage. He is friends with his younger son, Thomas, and like his wife, he is an enemy of his older son, Jeffrey. Um, and outside of the family, he is friends with Cherish Curious and Marshall Curious. But, anyway, something interesting that I want to note since I just kind of talked about how he has this high relationship with his wife. Um, in The Sims 3, their house, their bedroom, they don't share a bed. It was like two single beds next to each other, so they can't necessarily like boohoo or anything. Which I thought was really weird, but I guess because of like the traditional roles in the past. I don't know if that has something to do with it, but I definitely did not do that for them in my version of them here in The Sims 4. I gave them a double bed because, you know, I think that they would still woohoo. <laughs> I mean, hey, I would hope so. But anyways, a little bit more about Beverly, who is the matriarch of the family. She is implied, like I said, to have met her husband through the dating website. And on the second date, oh, 
her little wiki thing says on the second date, but in the biography it says third date. Hmm. Anyways, he proposed very early, and now they are married and have two sons. And like I said, she's friends with her younger son, Thomas, and just like her husband, she's enemies with Jeffrey, the teenager. And her hairstyle, fun fact, in The Sims story, which is similar, but not exactly. You saw a picture when I recreated her there, but it's similar to what I have going on in The Sims 4. But in The Sims 3, it's um, only available by using the makeover station, which is available in Ambitions. And, um, anyways, she has, like, this apron on, and she just is a housewife. Um, but what's interesting is that she's actually lazy. And I do, I did give her the lazy trait, because she's lazy. And I thought that was weird, <laughs> because she's, like, this housewife, and, you know, she married him. And I imagine that since, you know, we're going off the stereotypical gender roles, he expects her to cook and clean and all of that typical wife, mom's housewife stuff. And on the contrary, she's just quite lazy and honestly probably hates her life, which sounds very, like, not happy and depressing, but she, she's lazy, you know? And I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. It's just, nah, that's just what I'm going for, but I could be wrong. But anyways, he's very strict and very demanding. Um, so I feel like maybe they have a high relationship, but I feel like there's just more to the story than what we don't know. Like, I feel like there's, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because it looks perfect on the outside doesn't mean it's perfect on the inside. You can't, you know, judge a family or a book by its cover. And I think that's true for this family, aside from the weird fact that they have this supposedly perfect marriage, yet they, you know, met on a dating site and got engaged and married after the third, second, whatever date. And then in Sims 3... Apparently, they don't even sleep in the same bed with each other. That's weird. And then they also have a very rebellious, uh, well, I guess they're both rebellious because Thomas is um, more of like a troublemaker, but he's still a good child, whereas Jeffrey is just straight up evil. Oh, goodness. Yeah, I just feel like this family definitely has its issues, and it'd be a lot of fun to play with them in The Sims 4 if you wanted to download this family. But anyways, moving on, let's talk a little bit more about Jeffrey now, since he is the evil Sim that is not liked at all by his mother and father, which is kind of sad, but I mean, he's evil, and he has conflict with his whole family, um... But he's actually in a relationship. Well, I don't think they're in a relationship, but they're romantically interested in each other, and that is Chase Bayless. And I have already recreated the Bayless family. If you're interested in checking that out um, or downloading them as well, you can kind of play with these families side by side because a lot of these families will have relationships um, and their stories will kind of you know, go hand in hand. So, yeah, he has found joy in Chase, but he does not have a good relationship at all with his family. Um, but, yeah, Jeffrey reminds me of a sociopath or something. I know that's awful, but I've watched so many Lifetime movies, and also I like to watch the ID Investigation Discovery Channel, and he just reminds me of one of those kids that kills pets and grows up to be a serial killer, which, uh, God forbid, I hope, poor Jeffrey, I'm like speaking so much negativity upon him, but his hairstyle in The Sims 3, which I couldn't find that exact hairstyle in The Sims 4. I probably could have, you know, went and looked around CC shop, but I just decided to go with what I had in my game already. So he looks a lot more creepy in The Sims 3, but yeah, um, he just he just gives me weirdo vibes, and um, hopefully, hopefully he doesn't turn out as bad as I have him imagined in my head. And I feel awful for you know speaking like I said negatively upon him, but I'm just being honest. That's what he reminds me of. Apparently, he's gotten into tinkering on the computers, and I imagine that he, you know, would grow up to be a criminal. <laughs> I'm, like, dogging him out bad. Poor kid. 
anyways, I just imagine him being a hacker or something like that. And they don't have a computer in the house, which it was mentioned in the family biography from The Sims 3 that they don't own a computer. So I did not give them a computer. Um, I imagine that they don't own a computer for that reason. For the reason being, Beverly and Robert does not want him to find out or anybody to find out about their relationship and how it got started because they don't want the neighbors to find out. Uh, but anyways, yeah, they don't have a computer, so he probably goes to Chase's house and uses her computer, or maybe he goes to the library. I don't know, but Jeffrey is an interesting character, but moving on to his little brother, Thomas. So, Thomas is described to be a troublemaker, but ultimately he is a good kid. Um, he's the black sheep of the family somehow. He's the opposite of his older brother, who he is also enemies with. Um, he's friends with both of his parents, and he really doesn't know anybody outside of the family, so it, there's really not a lot of personality going on for this kid. You can just kind of make it up as you go if you wanted to play with him, but anyways, yeah, that is a little bit about the Castor family, and like I said, here we are doing their house, and keep in mind that it is modeled after a 1950s sitcom so i did go off of that inspiration when it came to picking the furniture and the wallpaper and the flooring i wanted it to be a little bit funky so yeah i think it turned out really nice and uh, they do have a gr not garage oh they do have a garage but they have a basement is what i'm talking about a basement downstairs and the basement downstairs in the sims 3 is huge like the size of their whole house and I didn't want it to be that big in The Sims 4, so I, I did change it up a little bit. I put their laundry room down there as well, but anyways, I imagine that's where the family goes to hang out most of the time. Even though their living room area is freaking huge, it is ginormous, and the bedrooms are big as well, especially Robert and Beverly's. You could definitely make this house four bedrooms instead of three, but... Yeah, I, I made it work, as, you know, as far as the size. I try to keep the floor plan and the room sizes and numbers, whatever, floor plan the same as in The Sims 3. Unless it's just absolutely absurd and looks completely better the way I tweak it, which probably would look better as four bedrooms. But anyways, I think it looks alright. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys enjoy the interior decorating that I am going to be doing in the background while I try not to ramble too much about what I'm doing, this and that. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and give you guys a little bit of an update on my life. Um, since, you know, we've already basically covered the family and the style house that we're going for should be self-explanatory on what we're doing here and whose room is whose. So, yeah, a little bit about me because, you know, I want to talk about myself. No, I'm just kidding. But I do try to give you guys, like, updates when exciting things happen. So, if you don't follow me on Twitter or if you don't follow me on Instagram or any of the social medias or if you, even if you do and you just happen to miss it, um, I have some exciting news. And that news is that I am engaged now. So, my fiancé now, boyfriend then, <laughs> proposed to me. Um, how many weeks ago was it? Was it two weeks ago? I want to say about two, almost three weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> but, anyways, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm still just like, ah, about it. And I don't have my ring currently because it's getting resized. See, so I got the wrong size, unfortunately. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm waiting on my wing. My wing. My wing. I'm waiting on my wing. <laughs> God help me my ring to be resized hopefully I'll be getting that back next week but anyways if you guys don't really know much about my personal life um those of you who have been following my channel for a while know that I obviously am in a relationship and I just had a baby well I guess not just had a baby, but he's still pretty new. He will be two months old next week, which is freaking crazy. Time flies by so fast, and it's really depressing. He's getting so big. He's in size two diapers. He's not, okay, not even two months old. Well, basically two months old, but still. Size two diapers. Um, he's in three-month clothes. He's already lifting and holding his head up like a champ. 
and he's basically outgrown his little bathtub sling and he's outgrown his swing. He's just getting too long for it and it's making mama really sad because they just grow up so fast and I mean I know that but seeing it firsthand, it being my baby, it's just, it's depressing, okay? It's really sad. It's really cool seeing him grow up and hit all these milestones and, you know, grow and thrive and develop a cute little personality, but at the same time, I'm going to miss him being this little and uh, I'm not going to cry, but anyways, yeah, we have a baby and of course, I knew that I was going to marry his daddy, this man, we'll call him Todd, okay, that's his name, Todd, I'm just gonna call him Todd, because it gets really confusing talking about, like, fiance, boyfriend, and, it's, okay, it's Todd, I knew I was gonna marry him even before I got pregnant, I just, I knew he was the one, they say, when you know, you know, I never believed it until I knew, and I wouldn't say it was when I met him that I knew, because I've known him for quite a while. Um, our families go to the same church, and I'm really good friends with his sister, who is a year and a half, about two years younger than me, and he's six years older than me, so at the time that I met him, I was in high school, and it was kind of weird. There was a huge age gap, and it's a little bit weird when or not weird, it's just, it's different when you're in high school and you're dating somebody outside of high school, but when you graduate high school, it doesn't really make that big of a difference how old the person is, like it, you know, it probably would have been like statutory rape or something, or just illegal for us to date if we had started dating when I first met him, but, you know, once, you know, time went on and grew and mature, I just think something changed, and he was just that person for me after just a really toxic, heartbreaking relationship. He was the light at the end of the tunnel, everything I prayed for and hoped for. So I knew I was going to marry him, but obviously I didn't expect to get pregnant before I got married. But hey, it happened. So of course I knew we were going to get married eventually because we do want more kids, at least two more. And we always said that well, after we found out I was pregnant, we are going to get married before we have any more. <laughs> so I knew that it, it was going to come eventually, and I knew that he would propose because, you know, whether we have a baby or not, I'm still going to have a, you know, appropriate wedding. It's going to be a real wedding with ceremony, reception. I'm not going to go to the courthouse and get married or anything just because I had a baby first, which a lot of people do that, and hey, that's fine, but that's not for me. I've always dreamed of having a wedding, so I've I've always been excited about that, and he knew that, so I was always like, hey, you know, just just go ahead and put a, you know, a, a, a ring on it so I can plan the wedding, and we don't have to get married, you know, so soon, but at least propose, you know, you know, when you get the money, whatever, no pressure, <laughs> um, so I knew that he was going to eventually, but I didn't expect it to be really this soon. Um, but I knew he was going to propose before he did because I'm not a nail person, y'all. And it, most girls, you feel me, when you get engaged or you see anybody getting engaged, they have their nails done. It never fails. In the pictures, their nails always look so nice and pretty and manicured, painted, whatever. Well, I bite my nails. I'm a nail biter. I've always been. My nails look like trash. And I hate fake nails. I hate paint paint my nails they just chip and it pisses me off I just not a nail person well his mom always has her nails done so one day he was just chilling and he was like hey I'm off Monday and my mom's off Monday I'm gonna give you some money and you're gonna go with her to get your nails done okay and I'm like why he's like oh it's fine I'll watch the baby just try not to you just trying to play it off and I'm thinking hmm so I literally said you want me to get my nails done because you're going to propose to me. And he was like, I mean, yeah, I am going to propose to you, but, I mean, don't get your hopes up that it's anytime soon. You know, I just figured you'd like to go and do something nice for yourself since you're, you know, always at home with the baby. And I was like, mm, okay, that's fine. <laughs> and so I kind of figured that was coming because... Of that reason only, I'm not a nail person. He knows that. And so for me to go get my nails done, I was kind of anticipating him proposing. Um, 
but a week, I think it was almost two weeks passed by. It was almost two weeks, and he still hadn't proposed, and my nails were starting to look like trash. They were growing out, and I was like, look, um, I need to go get these nails either off or filled in because I'm waiting on you to propose to me, and, you know, um, are you gonna, are you gonna propose? And he's like, just, just, just get them filled in. He was like, I, I want you to have your nails done. I didn't say it was going to be this week, next month. It could be five months from now, but I'm going to pay for you to keep your nails up, and you'll never know when to expect it. So I was like, okay, fine, whatever. Maybe it's not anytime soon, but at the same time, I knew it was coming, you know? You know what I'm saying? You feel what I'm, you, you know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, one night, because usually once a week, like on a Friday or Saturday, we'll leave Cooper, um, our baby, with one of our parents. And we'll go out to eat or see a movie or something just to have some, you know, a long time, a date date night or whatever with each other without the baby. And just it's important for relationships and, you know, we need that time. Especially me because I'm not working right now. So I'm always at home with the baby and I just need to get out sometimes. Um, so he was like, hey, we're going to take you know cooper over to your parents and we're going to go eat at the bluegill which is my favorite restaurant it's um out on the bay where i live and it's a seafood restaurant it has a band they have like live bands um they have a bar outside and i hadn't drank since i had the baby so i was pretty excited i was like okay yeah um, i breastfeed so i was you know planning on pumping i had pumped gotten all the milk ready ready for the night and everything so i could go out and have a good time and it was just me and him so i wasn't really expecting it to happen then um, i imagined that it would involve some friends of ours well halfway through the dinner his sister shows up or she calls and she's like hey i just got um, just picked up Josh, which is her husband, and she was like, um, we want to come have a few drinks with y'all, whatever, you know, we hadn't, they got to hang out with Carissa, really, since the baby's been born, so they came, once again, didn't really think anything of them being there, um, or anything like that, because we always go out to eat with them, and after we got done eating, we walked down to the pier, like I said, it's on the bay, and there's like a pier, um, off of the side of the restaurant, because we always go out there to take pictures every time we go, and so I was taking pictures with um, his sister and our friend Adeline, um, just kind of like recreating a picture we took when I was pregnant there. And he was behind me the whole time with the ring. I had no idea. <laughs> um, I wouldn't turn around. So his first initial goal was for me to be taking a picture with him and then me turn around to take a picture with him because he, he knows I'm going to want to take a picture with him and him be down on one knee, but I never turned around. <laughs> so he was like, okay, um, let's take a picture. <laughs> he had to kind of initiate it. And so we took a picture, and I went to look at the picture to approve of it. You know, just had a baby, wanted to make sure I didn't look, you know, huge or anything. So I was checking the picture out, and I turned back around because I was going to take another one, and he was down on one knee, and I was like, nah. <laughs> it was so sweet, and my friends was there. Um, like I said, his sister, she took pictures. Um, Adeline, our friend, was recording the whole thing, and the video was honestly so embarrassing. <laughs> so embarrassing. Of course, I wouldn't be the person that's just like, oh my gosh, yes, thank, oh my gosh, wow, you know, like, yay, no, I was like, nuh uh, are you for real, nuh uh, and then I just, like, do this weird, like, squilling thing, I flip my hair, I'm, like, doing a little dance, I almost slung us into the water and the ring, which would have been really bad, but I was so excited, and I think once he finally stood up, I just hugged him, and I was crying, I was so happy, and the ring is beautiful, he custom made it, did such a good job, but anyways, yes, <laughs> I'm very, very proud of him for doing that, and for us, you know, being engaged now, so life is getting a lot busier for those of you who've been keeping up with me, and you know, I used to be very consistent on my channel as far as you know, every day I was usually uploading, but since I was pregnant and since I've had the baby, it's just kind of been scattered speed builds. I haven't been doing any Let's Plays for that reason, just because keeping up with Let's Plays is a lot more demanding than doing speed builds. Um, so, yeah, I've kind of gotten into the, I guess you would say, um, what would you call this? Like the, the swing of things, just 
recording when I can, building when I can, as I'm here with the baby, and then I try to do the voiceovers when he's napping. I've kind of gotten in a routine, but since we now have a wedding to plan, I need to get a job because unfortunately YouTube is not paying me. I am <laughs> monetized on my channel, but obviously I'm just not that popular or anything right now. So it's not like I'm getting tons of money. I have I've, I haven't gotten any money. <laughs> um, so it's not paying my bills, and it's still something I enjoy doing. It's something I'm going to continue to do, and you know, hopefully one day, you know, you everybody dreams of growing and you know making a little bit of money off of you know what you put so much hard work into but you know it's nothing that I'm really expecting or anything like that um so yeah basically what I'm saying is I will be returning to work soon I've already applied to a few places and just kind of putting it in God's hands to put me where I need to be and all of that because yeah we have a wedding coming up and weddings are expensive and my dad is going to pay for as much as he can but I don't want to put all of the money and financial burden on my parents because they're in the process of purchasing a new house and I just don't really want to burden them that much so I'm going to try to contribute as much as I can me and Todd to our wedding of course so yeah, I need a job because I haven't had a job since the end of my pregnancy and I haven't had a job since the baby's been born. So it's been a blessing. It's been great. I'm thankful that I have such supportive family that has helped me with my bills. And Todd has been paying, you know, my car note, which is super expensive on top of his car note and my bills and his bills. And of course, you know, paying for me and a baby and our doctor bills and just like it's a lot on him. Um... So, especially nowadays, unless you are just, like, rich, <laughs> it's really hard to make a living off of just one person's paycheck. Um, and right now, we are living with his parents because we wanted to build um, a house. So, we're in the process of looking for land, but we may end up just settling for a house or something since, you know, it just depends. We're looking. We're weighing our options. But I definitely need to get a job so I could contribute. Um, so, yeah that's that's happening so I'm really kind of sad about it because I don't want to leave the baby but I'm excited because you know there's a wedding and we're gonna get our own place and it's just everything I've ever dreamed about in life is just coming true I have a family and I'm gonna be a wife and yeah it's great and I just appreciate you guys so much for just sticking with me and you know being my friend throughout this journey you guys that keep up with me on social media and congratulate me I don't it doesn't go unnoticed is what I'm trying to say um, I appreciate it so much all the love and the support um, I don't know I just I love this community I love the Sims and don't worry even though I get a I'm getting a job and things are changing <laughs> I'm not going anywhere I'm still gonna upload just I don't know how consistent it's gonna be so Anyways, keep that in mind, but that's just a little bit of an update on my life, so you're welcome in case you cared, but we're pretty much done here with the speed build, so as you saw throughout the decorating upstairs, it's very tacky looking, very old timey, um, just ratchet flooring, ratchet wallpaper, doesn't match, you know, the bedding or the decorations much at all, but, you know, we're going off of that nuclear family 1950 sitcom suburban house style so yeah that's that works it makes sense it flows when you think of it like that it's actually decorated very nicely i think but anyways yeah robert and beverly's room is huge so hopefully you guys agree that i kind of did what i could with it to make it feel lived in and not too just intimidating with that open space gosh i hate that but like I said earlier, I didn't want to split the floor plan in half and give a fourth bedroom because they don't have a reason to have a fourth bedroom, if that makes sense. Um, and then the boys' room upstairs, of course, you know, reflects their personalities. And then I hope you guys enjoyed their little basement downstairs with a TV and hangout area. And then I decorated the garage uh, nicely with a car and just a bunch of clutter and just added a few things to the backyard. But anyways, this build is wrapping up. So if you guys enjoyed it, it is available for download on the gallery as well as the family. So all that information is linked down below. Subscribe if you haven't. And with that being said, I love you guys and I'll talk to you later. Bye.
bird on a tree. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful, you and me. We meant to be in the great outdoors, forever free.